Morning Year 6 and welcome to Google Classroom. The lesson we're going to be doing today is we're going to be learning to convert fractions to percentages. Now this lesson is quite similar to the one that we did last Monday on our only day um, that we're in school for the spring term. However, it was a week ago and before that you had two weeks off and there were also quite a few people missing as well on that Monday. So I thought for our first lesson today we could review that because it's important that we understand this today before we move on to tomorrow when we are converting fractions, decimals and percentages. So just like when you come in in the morning, we normally do some mixed maths. So I'd like to start off today doing that for me, please. So got four questions there, got an addition, a subtraction, a multiplication of fractions and then a division. So if you could write those out and if you could have a go at those and it's probably a good time now to stop the video and then we will go through them when you've done them. Okay, so hopefully you've had a go at these four questions. Now normally what I would do in class would be to ask someone to talk me through them however obviously we can't do that now so I will talk through them as I solve them and then if you've got the answer correct give yourself a little tick uh, if you haven't see where you've gone wrong um, and see if you can correct it so we'll start off with number one the addition so it's a five digit addition and in a four digit addition so you can see that they're all lined up in the place value chart so remember we start over the right hand side so 9 and 1 is 10, 0 goes down there, 1 gets carried over, then we've got 8 add 1 add 1 is 10, 0, add the 1 over there again, 3 add 2 add 1 is 6, 7 add 6 is 13, add 3, put the 1, 8 add 1 is 9. Remember, adding in the comma, 3 from the end, 93,600. Right, moving on to number 2, the subtraction. 3 take away 8, we can't, we can't do this, so we need to come over to the 10s column to take a 10 off. This 8, which is in the 80s, now becomes 70. This 10 has come over here to turn this 3 into 13. 13 take away 8 is 5. 7 take away 1 is 6. We can't do 1 take away 7, so again we have to come over here to exchange. The 2 becomes 1, the 1 comes over there to turn that into 11. 11 take away 4, sorry, 11 take away 7 is 4. 1 take away 1 is 0. 4 take away nothing is 4. Again, adding that comma in 3 from the end, 40,465. Moving on to number three, the multiplication of the fractions. Remembering to solve this, rather than drawing out the grid like we have looked at in class, the quick compact method would be to multiply the numerators together. Three multiplied by six, by two is six. Nine multiplied by three is 27. We have a look at this to see whether, whether or not it could be simplified. Is there a number that goes into three, into six, and a number that goes into 27? Yes it is, it's three, so we could simplify them by dividing both by three to become two, divide by three to become nine. And that is the answer in its simplest form, remembering that six over 27 is still equal to two ninths. Right, moving on to number four, the final one, which is the division. It's short division just by one digit. So we have see how many times six goes into seven. It goes in once with one left over. How many times does six go into 12? It goes in twice, there's nothing left over. How many times does six go into three? It doesn't, so we need to write this zero and the three gets carried over. How many times does six go into 36? six times and there's nothing left over so there won't be a remainder with this. So the answer to this one, 1,206. 
So moving on to our main lesson today, which is to convert fractions to percentages. Okay, so our lesson today, looking at percentages. So percentages will be something that you will have come across um, a few times. If you have a phone or an iPad or some kind of tablet, something that requires a battery, more often than not, up in the top right hand corner, usually there is a percentage sign that shows you how much battery you have left. And you will have an understanding of this because you know if the battery is in the 90s or 100, you know that the battery is very nearly full. Whereas if it was lower, 5, 6, 7, down near 0, you know that the battery is lower. So you already do have a bit of an understanding of percentages already. Um, you see them in all kinds of different statistics. Last week we talked about that. We saw them um, in football matches when it talks about the possession that a football team has. So we do see them um, quite uh, quite often. And it's uh, really important that you remember that percentages is just a different way of displaying information that is less than one. So we've looked at fractions, we've looked at fractions for quite a few weeks and we looked at decimals, now we're looking at percentages. Fractions, decimals and percentages are just three different ways of displaying the same information, information where the whole is less than one, okay? so. What's important to remember about percentages is that the whole, when a percentage is complete, is out of 100. Information that you probably know already, but it's important that we just clarify that and remind you about that. So a percentage is always out of 100. And the way that we display that we are demonstrating something out of a percent is by drawing this symbol here, making sure that these two circles aren't too big so they don't get confused with the actual number. So remembering that percent is out of 100 and when we are writing the percent symbol, it looks just like this, okay? So the important information to remember, percent is out of 100. So I will just write that up at the top. So our work today was to convert fractions to percentages. So remembering this information at the top, that percent is out of 100. So if I was to write a fraction of 70 over 100, first of all, I've got the fraction here and want to convert it into a percentage. So the way we would do that, knowing that percent is out of 100, and this fraction has been split up into 100 parts. Remember, the denominator means how many times something has been split up equally. The numerator here is 70, so there are 70 parts of 100. So this fraction is quite easy to convert into percentages because we know percent out of 100. This has been split up into 100. So the numerator here, which is 70, becomes the percentage. So. 70 over 100 as a percentage is 70% and it's important that you understand that these two are identical to each other. 70 over 100 is completely identical, remembering the equal sign means balanced, both sides are the same. 70 over 100 is identical to 70%. Now that one is reasonably straightforward because the denominator is 100 already. So that one, not too difficult to convert the percentage with that one because the denominator was already 100. However, we don't always get the denominator being 100. Might have to do a little bit more work before that. So if we were to have a fraction like this, we've got 20 over 50 which is our fraction. And again, we want to convert it into a percentage. Remembering that percent is out of 100. So the way that we do this, because it can be converted, 
is to look at this denominator, to look at this 50. What can we do to this 50 to turn it into 100? So have a think for a moment, what is it that we could do? I'm sure you've all said that to me. We multiply it by two. So if we were to multiply this by two, 50 times by two is 100. Now, to ensure that this fraction is equivalent, is still equal to this fraction, we need to do the same to the numerator. So this gets times by two as well. So 20 times by two is 40. Now remembering those two fractions are still equivalent. Those two fractions are still identical in size. All we have done is change this denominator to 100 and we've changed the numerator, we times the numerator by two as well to turn it into 40. And that is so that we can then convert this into a percentage, remembering percent is out of 100, that's why we've changed the denominator. So we've got 40 over 100, remembering percent is out of 100, so the numerator becomes the percentage. So 40 over 100 is the same as 40%, and 20 over 50, it's the same as 40%. All of these three fractions and this percentage, they're all identical to each other. We've converted the denominator into 100 because percent is out of 100, then the numerator becomes the fraction. So let's have a look at another one. If we were to have 82 over 200 this time. Now again, we can't change it straight away because the numerate the denominator is not 100 percent is out of 100 so this denominator we need to turn it into 100 so we have a look at this now obviously this denominator is bigger than 100 so we're not going to be multiplying it this time because we need to make it smaller so we will be, we will be dividing it so this needs to be divided now just have a think for a moment, what does it need to be divided by? What does 200 need to be divided by to get to 100? Hopefully you're all shouting at the screens, dividing it by two. Now, what we need to do now is 200 divided by two to get to our 100. What we need to do is do the same to the numerator, remembering that these two fractions are identical in size. So whatever we do to the bottom, we need to do to the top to keep them equivalent. So 82 divided by two, if you can't do it in your head, you might want to write it out in bus stop. 82 divided by two is 41. So we've got 41 over 100 now. And now because the denominator is 100, we can now turn it into a percentage. The numerator becomes the percentage. So 82 over 200, we've made an equivalent fraction of 41 over 100, and then this, fraction has become the percentage which is 41 percent so we shall have a look at another one now so let's have a look at this one five over 20 so remember the procedure again this denominator needs to become 100 now you can see 20 is clearly smaller than 100 so we need to make 20 larger so what we need to do at this point, we need to multiply it. So you have a think for a moment, what do we need to multiply 20 by to get to 100? How many 20s go into 100? Several ways you could do this. You could do 100 divided by 20 to get to your answer. You could count up in 20s. So we'll do that. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 5. So 20 times by 5 is 100. Remember, we have to do exactly the same to the top. So 5 times by 5 is 25, which is equivalent to as a percentage. Percentage out of 100, the numerator becomes the percentage, which is 25%, which I'm sure some of you will know is equivalent to a quarter as well. If this fraction was simplified as far down as it could be, it could be a quarter. So everything that is written on my whiteboard here, all three fractions, as well as this percentage, 
they are all exactly the same size. So let's have a look at another one. We had 700 over 1000. Now, some of you at this point might have been able to say what the percentage is straight away. You might have been able to see the division that needs to be done first of all, and then you might have been able to turn that numerator into the percentage. Some of you might have seen that straight away. If you haven't, we can go straight through how we do this though using the procedure that we've talked about. So remembering that percentage is out of 100. 1000, how many times bigger is 1000 than 100? It's 10 times bigger, so we need to make it 10 times smaller. So we are dividing it by 10. We need to do the same to the numerator. 1000 divided by 10 is 100. 700 divided by 10 is 70. The numerator then goes on to become the percentage. So 700 over 1000, which looks like a big, quite tricky fraction, but simplified down. It could be simplified further, but remember we want to get it to 100. To 70 over 100, the numerator becomes the percentage. So let's have a go at another one. 6 over 25. So have a think for this one. Um, I will give you a moment to see if you can solve this one yourself. Remember that 25, you need to turn that 25 into 100. How many times does 25 go into 100? You can pause the video at this point if you want to, if you want to write down to see if you get the same answer I do in a moment. Okay, so let's have a go at solving this. So 25 is, you can see, smaller than 100%, is out of 100. How many times does 25 go into 100? Two different ways you could work this out. You could write it out in the division method. How many times does 25 go into 100? Or you could count up in 25s. 25, 50, 75, 100, it's four times. So the denominator and the numerator both need to be multiplied by four. So 25 times by four, gets us to 100, which is the magic number with percentages, the number we're always looking for. Six times by four is 24. Remember, we're converting to percentages. I bet some of you know that that could be simplified back down, but we're looking at converting to percentages. The numerator becomes the percentage, 24%. So six over 25, this is an equivalent fraction, but six over 25 as a percentage is 24%. So I will write another one out for you as well for you to have a go at and then you can pause the video now if you wish to have a go at this one. 72 over 200. What is that fraction as a percentage? So we can see that 200 is a larger number than 100. What do we need to do to 200? To get it down to 100, we need to divide it by 2, don't we? 200 divided by 2 is 100, so we need to do exactly the same. So the numerator, 72 divided by 2 is 36. 36% is the answer. Very well done. We'll have a go at two more before I let you attempt some work of your own. So let's have a go at this. 300 over 500. And we're looking at getting this fraction. What is that as a percentage? So you can pause the video there and you can have a go at that yourselves. So what we need to do here the 500 needs to become 100, so what do we need to do to do that? Dividing it by 5, and we need to do exactly the same with this one. Now, 
maybe slightly tricky this one you might be able, you might be able to do this by taking the zero off or if you're unsure you can always write it out in good old bus stop method so how many times is five go into three it doesn't it's carried over how many times is five go into 30 it's six how many times is five go into zero it doesn't so the answer is 60. Remember, we're still looking at making this a percentage. So the numerator becomes the percentage, 60%. Hopefully you got to that answer yourself as well. Right, we'll have a go at one more. So if I have 2000 this time and I we're looking at dividing this by 200. What is 200 over 2000 as a percentage? So you can pause the video there and see if you can work that out. Okay, and if we're looking at solving this question, we're dividing 2000 to get it to 100. So we're going to making it smaller. Now, what are we going to be dividing this by? So we have this question now, 200 over 2000, and we are trying to get this 2000 into 100. It's clearly bigger than 100, so it's definitely going to be a division for both. How many times does, what do we need to do to this 2000 to turn it into 100? How many times does 100 go into 2000? And it goes into it 20 times. So we need to do exactly the same to the numerator. 200 divided by 20 is 10. Remembering their equivalent. And we're going to display the same information just in a percentage. So the numerator becomes the percentage 10%. So 200 over 2000, dividing both by 20, it's an equivalent fraction of 10 over 100, which is then 10%. So what I'm going to ask you to do now when I've finished talking is to go back onto Google Classroom and there is a worksheet for you to have a go at. If you could answer the questions on that and then once you have completed it you can send it back to uh, either myself if you're in my class or Mrs Rowe if you are in her class. Good luck and we'll have another math lesson tomorrow. Bye bye.